The big snowstorm the buyers talked about yesterday is now a reality. Rolling over the Midwest like a blanket, our world is now white. The temperature is dropping on the back side of the front. Mike Reed meets this new reality by heading to one of his best stands, the one he calls the graveyard set, the spot where he expects to encounter his number one buck. It's Friday, November 9th, and uh, I'm back down here on my farm. As you can see, we have fresh snowfall. It's about 28 degrees. We have a west-northwest wind that's pretty light, maybe five miles per hour. We're back in here on the graveyard set after Curly and possibly Mo. I haven't been here the last two days. I was working, and um, we've already seen three bucks this morning, so it's really quiet. It's fun to hunt a fresh snow on November 9th, and uh, we're hoping for some good activity. It's about 10 o'clock and uh, we're gonna wrap up the hunt here. One of my Louisiana buddies who's been up here all week hunting uh, shot a buck this morning. So this morning was really good. The first couple of hours, the last hour has been really slow. We haven't seen a deer. So it was a fun hunt in the snow. Uh, like I mentioned, the activity really slowed down. We're gonna go track this buck and then make a plan for this afternoon. That same morning, 150 miles to the west, Owen Riegler is once again hunting the giant bodied buck he calls crabs. Well guys, we had a decent sit this morning. We saw a few bucks and a few does. Maybe, uh, probably the best buck was a three-year-old, I think. He was running a doe around the other side of that drainage there, but we're gonna get down and we're gonna switch stands. We're gonna move about 200 yards to the west where we've been seeing that crab's buck, so. We'll go try him again right there and see if we can make it a trifecta three for three in there, so we'll be back with you here in just a few. Owen and Mike are not the only ones hunting this winter wonderland. 120 miles to the northeast, Jared Mills is back on his river farm, trying to pick up the pieces after the October floods wiped the farm clean. All right, well, that's going to do it. Um, I keep telling Brad that I'm shocked at how slow it's been. I just feel like if this was last year and we were in this spot on November 9th uh, with these conditions, I just think that we would have had a, an incredible hunt, but for some reason they just don't seem to be in here like they were last year. And I don't know if it's the flood, I mean you can, if you look down you can see a lot of the vegetation is still laid over so they're not bedding in here as much there's just not as much ground cover or if we lost more good bucks than we knew of late season last year not having the food on the farm uh, I'm not sure what the deal is but uh, it's definitely night and day compared to what it was last year so hopefully it's just a matter of time and, and they'll move back in here and we'll start seeing some of the bucks from last year 
But right now, I don't really have an answer. Uh, we're just gonna keep bouncing around a little bit and see if we can find them, so. We're gonna climb down and go check a few cameras, see if anything new has shown up. Um, I'm actually in a wedding tomorrow, so I'm out for this, this evening and all day tomorrow, but I plan on being back out Sunday. Uh, but hopefully, we uh, get some information from the trail camera carpool here in a few minutes and uh, have something to move in on on Sunday. All right, just got done pulling some cards. That uh, JJ Marino buck, we don't know which one it is, and he showed up uh, again a few days ago on the same scrape, like six in the morning. Uh, hopefully he becomes more and more regular and we can get on him. Uh, other than that, just a lot of good young bucks. Uh, one mature buck that's uh, half rack or broken off just past the brow time, I think. Hopefully it continues to get better. Uh, it, it, I just think it has to. We have a little bit of food on the farm and uh, just where this, where this farm's located, we should get some, some late rut cruisers. Don't you think? How, how big is yeah. the inside of this? Uh, <laughs> you can put that in that bag you got. Little buck. Little buck just ran through right now. There it goes. That afternoon, Mike Reed heads back to the same stand he hunted in the morning. It's about 2.30 on the afternoon of November 9th. It's Friday and uh, we're set up for the afternoon hunt. We're back in the graveyard set. Um, as hard as it is for me to keep coming back over here, I feel like as many pictures as I have of that buck I call Curly right under this stand, eventually we're gonna meet up. I uh, don't like to hunt the same stand over and over, but I've got the right wind and we haven't been boogering it up too bad. So try it out one more time. Uh, last time, a little over a week ago, we were hunting here the 26th, 27th, and the first afternoon hunt I did not make here is when he came out in daylight, so I had him right here on this camera. So we're going to try it again. This morning we had a great hunt, 11 bucks, three four and a half year olds. Two primary bucks are going to be Curly and Mo. so hopefully one of those guys shows up. Mike waits for the evening movement to start. Owen Riegler decides to sit out the high winds in a redneck blind only a short distance from the stand where he's been hunting crabs. All right, guys, we're back here. November the 9th. This is the afternoon. This morning we hunted just about 200 yards east of here. Matter of fact, you can see the green source right there. We're just on the other side of that walnut tree where we've been hunting that crab's buck. He's been feeding right there, not far from here. So the winds are gusting about 25 or 30 this afternoon. So we decided to go to this redneck. I thought we might get some swirling winds. So we do pick up one more little funnel if they come down this tree line where we opened up that fence gap right there. It goes right by this redneck. So we do pick that up at least. We'll sit in here for a few hours, see what happens. They ought to feed pretty good. It feels like a late season hunt. Cold and windy, snow on the ground. So I bet we see some deer. Man, he's a pretty buck, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's cool. I think this is interesting. That buck out there is the same buck Max and I filmed here about four or five days ago. He's got that like black stripe right there going down the side of his face. And he's over probably a mile and a half from where we filmed him. So that just shows you what the rock can do for you. I mean, if they can't find a girlfriend, they're going to get on their horse and start looking. He 
was 10 yards from the wall, not okay. Can you explain that one? Exactly. You know, the interesting part is these bucks are walking 15 yards from that walnut that we've been hunting in, so go figure. Hopefully crabs doesn't do that same thing. Or I'm gonna dive out of this redneck head first. As the field in front of Owen clears, we rejoin Mike Reed at the graveyard set as the buck he has been after all season finally appears. my number one buck, uh, Curly, that I'm after. It's our first time we lay eyes on him this year, and the wind got us. He came in the one spot I couldn't get a shot, so I needed the doe to go to the north of us to make it easy on me. Um, otherwise, they would have winded us, and right at the end there, he got to about 22 yards, and uh, the wind swirled, and she smelled us, and they ran off, so. I don't think he really knows what happened, and he's pretty locked down with her, so I gotta try to figure out where she's gonna go. Uh, at least he's in my central timber here, and uh, he'll probably be there the next couple days, so we'll just keep, I don't know, I'll have to game plan and see if I can figure out a safe way to hunt him and hopefully have him come by us again. Good encounter, disappointing, waiting for it to end, but uh, close.
Even though several deer spook near his blind, Owen Riegler's hunt on November 9th is far from over. In fact, it is just getting started. That big buck and his doe, they just ran out because we had two does get bumped by a buck up this fence line. And these other deer could hear that. And they spooked and all ran off. Uh, just bad luck there. There's not much you can do about that. It's the rut. Could just as easily be good luck and they could run this way. So Max just saw the crabs buck out on this side as well. So we didn't get to film it, but hopefully he'll come this way. Just like the other night. Mm -hmm. He's going after the smaller buck. standing just perfect and I just started putting pressure on my trigger and he turned and I I don't know couldn't quit putting pressure on the trigger quick enough and he turned and it almost shot right beside him I couldn't tell but and he was standing there at, right at that scrape right there and it felt good when it went off and I, I couldn't see that arrow hit so I don't know it made a heck of a thump but we'll have to watch it back and, and see. I have no idea. Hopefully we got him. It's a heck of a buck. I think it's been like four years we can trace that buck back, so... That's awesome. Alright guys, we ran back and got the camera light. Uh, 
You guys are probably wondering what in the heck was up with my reaction after I shot that buck. I'll tell you what happened. So I seen him run north after I shot him up that tree line. There's a little blind spot for me right there in the redneck blind. And I threw my binox up the hill, like 80 or 100 yards up there. I was waiting to watch him run through that spot. Well, I never did see him go up through there. And uh, of course, I didn't see him go down. Max seen him go down on film just like you guys just did. So uh, I still have not walked up to him and put my hands on him. You know, it's been like a four year quest for this buck. So I wanted to bring you guys with me the first time we, we put our hands on him. So let's go check him out. So right there, that's that rubbing post that Drake and I set up this summer. We, it was on the main show there. And so this is the area where crabs runs. He uses this plot a lot during the rut. And he's come down this trail, I don't know how many times. And I'm hoping he does it one time when we're sitting in that redneck blind. He hits that scrape for the last time. It's what we're going for. Oh yeah, there's blood right there from the first initial hit. Okay, we'll just track him up here. I just like tracking deer, I'm not gonna lie to you, so I'm just gonna track him anyway, so we'll do that. That's a giant, guys. Let's go put our hands on him. <laughs> wow, look at that. He got caught in that fence. Jeez, look at the neck on this dude. No oh, my word, guys. I can't believe the size of that G2 right there. Oh my word. So fortunate to have a deer of this caliber to, to even hunt and see. And what a hunt tonight. I mean, you guys watched it. I've always said I'd rather be lucky than good, so tonight was no different. This is why you put in all the work and, you know, do all the crazy amounts of stuff we do, you know, TSI projects and Put the food on your farm. I can't get over that G2. That's just freaking me out. Oh my gosh. Get him loaded up. It's a heck of a night. Hopefully it continues to get better. Uh, it, it, I just think it has to. We have a little bit of food on the farm, and uh, just where this where this farm's located, we should get some some late rut cruisers. Well, that's my number one buck, uh, Curly, that I'm after. He's just a buck of a lifetime, guys. Fresh snow is the reset button for a deer season. Everything feels different, fresher, more intense. The bucks are increasingly tied down now with does, but as both Owen and Mike showed us, this is not always a bad thing as long as you are where the doe wants to be. The rut's midsection is not nearly as much about trying to figure out bucks as it is about figuring out the does. The bucks will be where the does take them. Unfortunately, the does tired of being harassed by everything with antlers stop moving, and this leaves us guessing. Where are they going to pop up? Even if we go every day, we can expect just two or three really good hunts during the next week and a half. Now the only thing that matters is being in the right place when a hot doe moves in daylight. Our lives grow both simpler and more complex at the same time. Guessing where this will happen is never easy, but that is our new challenge as we continue chasing November. <laughs>